Hello, this is Sartre with Mythic MTG Tech number 362, talking about the top 10 cards from the new Masters 25 set that's coming out. First, I've got to comment on this marketing. I really like the alters that Wizards came up with, with the characters coming out of the cards. I wish they had done something similar with the port here. That is beautiful. I love altered cards. And how cool would it be if inserts in magic cards were actual like artist alters someday? That would just be amazing. I would love to see that. Before we jump into the top cards though, I wanna mention three foils. I'm gonna do a whole different foils video. These are three cards that I would pick up. Your Blast. This is the first time they're being printed in foil. They have awesome new artwork that was clearly designed to look good in foil. I'm going to be grabbing a place out of both just for vintage and fun stuff. And Eidolon of the Great Revel. This is one of those cards that is well worth it in modern. Really good EDH hate card. Just solid card. Looks good in foil. I would definitely pick up foil copies. Honorable mentions here, Doomsday, classic card that has a vintage deck around it, almost made the top 10 list. I know it's pretty low priced, but it is a great card. Flash, Protean Hulk, super broken combo there. Cool to see kind of a nod to that deck here. Mana War is one of my absolute favorite cards, especially in draft. It was in some of the really early tempo decks out there. And Nicol Bolas, classic card with the best artwork. Okay, the original artwork is also just stunning because he's hanging out in a library, like can't get better than that. Well, you can get awesome scary dragon or super cool dragon in a library. Number 10 here, I've got the filter lands. A lot of people in the competitive community are not happy about these. As an EDH player, I freaking love these. They are just an efficient way to get the mana you want when playing casually. Yes, fetch lands are better, but you can't compare everything to fetch lands and these are great for draft. They're very solid cards, great for the casual market. Super happy to see these coming back. Number 10 spot here, Phyrexian Ablo. Obliterator, super cool card. See some edge play in Modern. See some play in Commander. I really like this card a lot. Number four spot here, Azusa. This card jumped through the roof because it was part of a combo deck and EDH players have loved this card for a long time. So it just never came back down. Nice to see a reprint here that's gonna help people get access. Number eight spot here, Vendillion Click is back again. And this is just one of those competitive cards that is always good. It is great in Legacy. It is playable in Modern, although I like Geist a little bit better in Modern now that we've got Crazy Pants unbanned, and I'll get to him in a minute. Blood Moon. Oh, God, this card is so awesome. I play this card in Vintage. Drop it, turn one, and watch people cry. Although, I'd prefer it to actually be reprinted in a white border foil because... Knocking out $500 to $1,000 cards with a white border just feels so much better. Number five here, Chalice of the Void. This is one of those cards that I am shocked is still legal in Legacy. It is so good. It crushes a lot of the one casting cost, super powerful spells that are out there and hurts combo decks a lot also because they lose their brainstorms and ponders. This card is a house when it comes to vintage. This is a really powerful hate card. And when talking about hate cards, we can't forget Ensnaring Bridge. For a game that's about having creatures attack other players, this is the way to shut down the entire game and make sure everyone cries and doesn't get to play the game. EDH hate card, staple in lanterns, classic card against show and tell, just a very good card overall. Happy to see it back with new artwork. Number three spot here, Imperial Recruiter. Oh, I got a play set of these. This made me cry. It basically shows that pretty much everything can be reprinted unless it's on the reprint list, which is actually really good for the game. Yes, this is dropping and eventually you're gonna find these guys at like 40 bucks, maybe even a little bit cheaper because it's only played in two edge decks out there or one edge deck, depending on who you talk to. It is a great card in Alluren and that brings down the price of the deck some, although it's really the dual lands that make that an expensive deck. So the demand on this card is not gonna be that high, which means that EDH players will get to play it. A tutor in EDH is just really nice, especially in red. Rishadon Port, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Wizards. There is one tier one deck that has no 
cards that are on the reserve list in Legacy, and it is Death and Taxes. And seeing Rishadon Port come back just makes me ecstatic. That drops the cost of this deck by probably a good two, three hundred bucks. Having cards that are played in Legacy that are tier one reprinted helps a lot. That is my favorite competitive format. I know it's slowly dying because of the reserve list, but seeing tier one cards that can be reprinted, reprinted does help what is a really, really fun format. Number one card here, yes, you guessed it, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Crazy card, unbanned in modern. I, I tried to do a video a few times on this unbanning, it just seems nuts to me because this is a tier one legacy card and there are several tier one and tier two decks currently in modern that are playing worse versions of Jace. Now that you can have the real deal, Jace the Mind Sculptor, why would you play some of the other Planeswalkers that were in those spots? This is a classic card. This card will sell packs. That's exactly what they're trying to do. It is an icon for the game. I understand Jace is the face of magic, and that's why they put him in here. I'm glad they reprinted him with the unbanning because his price has already gone way up and will continue to be high long term. What cards did I forget? Was there something amazing in this set that you did not see on this list? Please leave them in the comments. Thank you to everybody's over there supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Become a patron and there are some nice advantages for you. Also, thank you to chess.com who sponsors my channel. If you want to play me at chess, please head over to chess.com. Use the referral number here. I, I get credit for individuals who sign up and I love playing chess. I carry a board with me all the time, carry a few decks with me. I will play magic or chess pretty much anytime, anywhere. Until next time, choose your cards wisely. And I've got a quick little personal aside here. I've been focusing on my personal channel a bit recently. It's over there. It's Sartorus. I lost partner status. I've actually had it longer than this channel and that kind of bummed me out. So if you've been a fan of the channel for a while and you want to hear me rant about crazy stuff or learn about the law outside of Magic the Gathering, please consider heading over and subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm doing a lot of stuff with YouTube this year, getting my personal channel up back to partner status and then continuing here on Mythic MTG Tech. And I may even be starting a new legal channel called Lawyer in a Kilt. So watch out for that. Thank you guys so much. Till next time, take care and... Choose the cards wisely.